through it and find the common themes and, and join those up with what we hear in, in other similar uh, roundtables. And, um, and we'll put out a report of what some of the ideas are that have been coming forward, what the concerns are, and that we'll be using that uh, for um, advocacy purposes and to help guide what we do. Um, Vicky, are you here? I don't see Vicky. Okay, well, very often we're joined uh, by uh, the Director of Strategic uh, Partnerships. Um, I am, uh, Larry. Oh, there you are. There's Vicky. Okay, <laughs> so Vicky's here. And uh, anyone else from? Oh, there she is. Oh, I see you. Yes, a mother. Usually Vicky joins by phone and she's been joining uh, so we can see her lately. That's wonderful. So anyway, this is the, the, the team that we're working with. Um, the Canadian Network for Arts and Learning is a, a not-for-profit uh, charitable foundation. We've been operating for several years uh, and our goals are to uh, really um, support the network of, um, of arts and learning, support the arts and learning sector uh, in terms of research and sharing best practices and working together on advocacy. So we're, uh, and we just happen to be in the middle of um, a project well, with some Canada Council funding for which we're very grateful, which is on a, a digital strategy uh, from their digital strategy, um, uh, what a big program, program. And uh, so that fits perfectly with what we're trying to do. And I just thank you very much for joining us and look forward to a, a very interesting conversation. Um, Jennifer is now going to take over and make sure everybody's on the same page in terms of uh, uh, operating the Zoom technology. Thanks, Larry. Yes, probably uh, many of you are familiar with Zoom, but if you're not, I'll go through it really quick. Um, so first off, um, <clears throat> anyone who wants to take part in the conversation and who wants to um, introduce themselves, et cetera, um, we, if possible, um, please um, enable your video. And, uh, and then I will know that you want to be part of it and I will, uh, I will call on you. Um, um, and especially if you have your hand raised in, in the second part. Um, also, uh, I will likely mute you throughout the session because if you're um, not muted, then uh, you may be showing up in the video um, afterwards. <clears throat> Um, also, there can be a lot of noise bleeding for those, uh, especially for those who have the headphones on. Um, so at the bottom of your screen, you'll see that there's a bit of a, you'll see that there's something called participants. If you want to enable that, there, it will bring up a menu on your right hand side in which you will see everybody who is on the call. Also, uh, there's an option there to raise your hand and uh, that will come in handy once the conversation gets going, the second part, and uh, you want to chat. So uh, virtually raise your hand if possible. If not possible, just, you know, wave, wave and I'll uh, call on you. Um, also, there is at the bottom, you can enable chat as well. And uh, the chat has been really great through the past few um, through the past few roundtable discussions that we've had. People have been posting links about things that they've uh, been talking about. Uh, also, you have the option to directly message someone. If you don't want to send a message to the entire group, you can choose someone's privately to message, whether you want to comment on something that they just said or ask them a question privately or even ask them for their contact information if you want to follow up afterwards. Um, <clears throat> so all of that is, uh, uh, it's been very useful and hopefully you can make use of that. Throughout the call also I will be um, posting three different polls, be launching those polls um, with two questions each and uh, encourage you to take part in that if, if possible. And just so you know, the polls are completely confidential, so uh, completely anonymous. So I don't know, I won't know what you have written there. So please do feel free to take part. And again, if you're just joining us, I see people are coming in. If you want to take part in the conversation, please enable your video, or you can also message me through the chat um, if you don't have video and, uh, and I will know to call on you at that point. 
Um, <clears throat> so, um, so to start off, we'll just kind of go around the room. If you want to say your name, say your title, the organization that you work with, if that's applicable, and uh, one or two sentences about kind of how um, how these measures have affected you um, in the last couple of weeks, the social distancing measures, etc. Uh, so we'll start off with Andrea. I'm Andrea Hibbert. I'm executive director with the London Arts Council in London, Ontario. Uh, we are a funder and we also run uh, quite a bit of public programming for the city of London and uh, for multiple arts organizations and professional artists. Uh, I guess with a number of our programs, we do a lot of work with the school boards here in our community. We do work in healthcare. So with uh, Parkwood Mental Health Institute, uh, McCormick Home, which is a, a senior's home here in London, and um, with Participation House Hutton House and Larsh, who work with people with um, various challenges. So uh, we're in a number of different sectors, and so we're working quite a bit with those different areas and, and obviously seeing how different sectors are reacting and putting measures into place. So we're learning a lot, actually, from the partnerships that we already have in existence. And so uh, I think we're finding that we're actually having to work longer days and more hours and quickly because so many things are going online and people are reaching out and looking for answers uh, in a hurried fashion without us really being able to take the time and, and consider what multiple options are. So I'd say our response time is changing dramatically and that's a little bit of pressure. So amongst many other things, and thanks for having me today. Great, thank you very much, Andrea. Um, Cliff. Hi there, uh, Cliff Salis. I'm a program lead for the Performing and Fine Arts at uh, Greater Fort Erie Secondary School in uh, Fort Erie, Niagara, Ontario. And uh, essentially uh, joining in to see what's happening across the uh, province, not just with uh, educators, but other arts organizations. We're all in the same boat, uh, not a lot of direction yet as to uh, what expectations there are for us in terms of uh, curriculum delivery and uh, trying to look what that's gonna look like in uh, something like the performing arts, where normally it's very hands-on and participatory. Right, right, thank you, Cliff. Uh, Gregoire. Sorry, uh, good morning or good afternoon, everybody. Uh, Gregoire Gagnon, the uh, Executive Director for the Cultural Human Resources Council. Uh, we're trying to monitor as much as we can uh, with the you know, changing situation. And I think there is a huge, huge link between arts, culture, and education. So I, I wanted to be on this call to see what was happening. Uh, we are very interested in anything that would help promote, obviously, arts and culture in any way, especially bridging that gap with uh, the education uh, component and everything going online now. So we're just keeping an eye out for everything. So thank you for having me. Great. Thank you. Uh, Jackie. Uh, yeah, I'm calling from in from Ottawa, Ontario. I'm the founding artistic director of the Cantiamo Choirs of Ottawa. And I also do some work with the Coalition for Music Education in Canada and the National Arts Centre. And um, right now, like everybody, we're scrambling to try and do a very different kind of life uh, in a very short space of time. And I know with many of the meetings that I've had, I often find that I'm the wet blanket. Uh, I'm quite a realist and I also think that as proactive, creative people, we need to be very careful of our own energy uh, and self-care because so many of us are bending over backwards to try to make things work and we are doing awesome things, but I'm finding it very time consuming, huge learning curve um, and lots of things that are working for everyone else. Uh, we had great feedback last week from our parents. I did a Zoom, I don't want to call it a choir rehearsal, uh, a music visit, so to speak. But it's basically myself entertaining the kids uh, for an hour, which they loved. And we did some things. Parents were emailing, oh, this was so spirit lifting. My daughter is smiling. She's so happy. And I thought, 
I need a drink. <laughs> I'm exhausted. <laughs> um, but even with the Coalition for Music Education and National Arts Centre uh, for our Music Monday celebration, that's a national celebration to advocate for music education. And we've been trying to figure out how we can still do that and still stand out somehow when everything is online. Uh, as great as all the online things are, they are all online. Um, so I created some voice lessons and teaching of a song, little videos, which was very new to me. I'm uh, very much a, a techno noob. Uh, I, I love the, the learning, but the learning curve is pretty, pretty steep. Um, but like everybody, we have a lot of broken hearts in our lives because what we do depends on us being together. And we also all work thinking two and three years in advance. So the domino effect isn't just what's happening this season, but also next season as well, very much so. Uh, so I'm really glad to be included in this conversation. It's very interesting to hear how we're all going to uh, set sail across the stormy sea. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jackie. Um, Jadzia. Hi, my name's Yacha. I'm in Ottawa. I'm a painter and an expressive arts practitioner. And uh, all I'm going to say is I was at Walmart. Was it? Well, anyway, one of these stores the other day and the, sorry, the carts were being loaded by the parents and their kids of paints and canvases and all that stuff. So I just want to say, as you guys all know, um, arts is really big right now. Like it's all the online singing. My community had a little street singathon. Um, uh, yeah, arts, arts is right now, I think, saving people. People are being encouraged to express, write, paint, draw, dance, whatever they can do. There's a lot of online stuff for that. And isn't that wonderful? So um, here to see how other people are uh coping thank you great thank you uh jamie hi can you hear me yeah okay hi my name is jamie i'm the executive director of creative industries north bay inc so we're a regional art service organization in northern ontario um we're not a funder at this point we're fairly new in having capacity to have uh, an employee at all. So that's just within the last two years. Um, same as everyone, uh, this is hitting our creative sector, especially in Northern Ontario in a small community of, of 54,000. Um, we're North Bay Nipissing, so we're a little bit larger if we include the Nipissing um, Indigenous territory as well. Uh, but all of our venues are closed, all of our brick and mortar is closed programming is closed uh, and it's hard. Northern Ontario, we don't have a lot of financial support. We don't have a lot of creative sector support in terms of keeping our programs, our galleries, our artists afloat uh, financially. So this is gonna be a huge, huge hit for us. Uh, and so as the support and advocacy uh, organization, I'm trying to stay as informed as I can so I can communicate all of those things across to my own creative sector community um, for obviously financial reasons, but also just uh, educational reasons and to really try to nail home to our municipality that the arts and culture, uh, like the last speaker just said, is super important. We can see that now while everyone's in self-isolation and physical distancing that the creative sector is really bringing all of us together and kind of keeping us all sane. Uh, but is that support, is that role that the arts and culture is playing now going to see financial support in the end um, relay accordingly? So uh, I want to ensure that my community stays afloat um, because they are doing so much to adapt and really keeping our community connected but we need, we need that reasoning and that um, mindset that we are very, very important to the health of a community, to the financial feasibility of communities. We need that to go beyond this pandemic and possibly see some positive change out of this. So I want to really kind of suck in as much knowledge and as much information and connections as I can to try to really see that through. Right, thank you, Jamie. <clears throat> Jonathan. 
Well, uh, good afternoon, everybody. Um, I'm probably going to be the black sheep in the room here. Um, I have no art background whatsoever. I'm actually here in a capacity as a, a senior science teacher from Algoma District School Board. Uh, found out that there was going to be a venue for people to you know, speak about possibly adding some technologies and ideas to their classroom environment. And so I'm, I'm not here actually as an arts person. Um, my role often in my school board is I'm kind of a tech pioneer. Uh, when there's new technologies and something that can benefit the classroom, uh, I'm often thrown in first to see um, how we can incorporate some of these technologies into the classroom. So this is my first time seeing the Zoom platform. Um, and I was really curious to see, um, not so much from an arts perspective, but from just how do we communicate with our students long distance, especially if this goes on longer than a week or two. I have three classes, one of them's an e-learning classroom. Uh, that has stalled, completely stopped, which I find a little odd considering it's an e-learning platform. Um, but I'm curious to see what people are doing um, to just try to further communications um, more at the classroom level. Any information that I get back that's useful, I bring back to my school board and see what we can adopt as a board that uh, might be working for other people out there in whatever capacity, uh, whether it be arts or science or English or, or whatever other things you guys are using. So. Uh, if I'm in the wrong place, I apologize. Uh, I'm doing this directly from technology, um, but still interested in hearing what you guys have to say. Great, thanks, Jonathan. Um, Julie. Hi, everyone. My name is uh, Julie Tucker. I'm the director of the Arts Council of Windsor and Region. Um, we've been in operation for, four, this is our 40th anniversary this year. Um, I, echo, I echo much of the sentiments of my colleagues, um, just feeling a lot of pressure here um, to gather information and be re relevant and, and continue to serve the community. Um, so I, I think I'll just leave it at that because uh, give, more, give some more time to the people. Sure. Yeah. Thanks, Julie. Uh, Lisa. Oh, hi, um, I'm Lisa Machino, and I'm currently a research project coordinator with Thinking Rock Community Arts, uh, which is a, um, a not-for-profit uh, community-engaged uh, arts organization in, working out of Thessalon in Northern Ontario. And uh, it provides um, community building uh, to uh, and cross-cultural community building through training and consulting services and programming. And, um, and currently my role there is, is on a specific project, which is uh, to gather the stories and experiences of uh, community artists who are working throughout Northern Ontario, you know, getting the sense of their um, experiences, how they're working in their communities, what their challenges are. Um, so with the um, the current situation, it's, it's actually become very interesting in how it's informed uh, some of that research, some of the stories that we're hearing and how people are thinking about what they do and how they do it, um, especially in Northern Ontario, where uh, I think it was Jamie who said, you know, uh, it, you have a lot of small pockets, smaller communities, pockets of activity, but very geographically spread out. So. Um, looking at uh, through the research that uh, Thinking Rock is doing, looking at, you know, how to uh, bring together, uh, build that sense of, of community and, and um, uh, cohesiveness uh, through art making, through the arts that are happening in Northern Ontario. Um, so that said, you know, our uh, Thinking Rock's programming is where, you know, everyone's scrambling to try to figure out how do we adapt uh, what it is that we do to this new normal that we have that we're facing and uh, you know how to continue the work uh, in an online uh, format so um, you know that that's one thing and and I'm actually straddling uh, two positions so I will be uh, in May starting uh, work with the Dots of Bito Wellness Academy which is an arts based uh, program for seniors with dementia that runs out of Toronto. But as you can imagine, working with a vulnerable population, there's a lot of uncertainty around that. And it's, uh, I'm not quite
quite sure what's going to happen with that program over the long term in terms of what the long term of impact is going to be. So, you know, lots of uh, questions and uncertainties in both areas and, and certainly uh, interesting times. And I'll, I'll leave it at that. <laughs> thank, Great, you. thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lisa. Yeah. Uh, Michael. Hello, <clears throat> I'm Michael Clipperton. I live in Halliburton, Ontario. Um, I'm wearing two or three hats, I guess, today. Um, I'm an instructor uh, at Lakehead University in the Faculty of Education, and um, I teach drama and dance to teacher candidates. Uh, fortunately, our class is finished on March the 13th, so we just got everything in on time. But unfortunately, my students had all of their uh, teaching placements canceled, um, uh, which were to start last week. So their final, and they're in their final year, so their final placement has, will not take place. Um, so that's one hat I'm wearing. The second hat I'm wearing is um, I'm on the uh, steering committee of SPARC, which is supporting performing arts in rural and remote communities. I think, uh, um, I'm sorry, I forgot your name from um, uh, North Bay. We have done, yeah, we've done some work with you, I think. Um, we're just in the process of, uh, Spark is just in the process of uh, uh, applying for funding. We've just applied for funding for the, from Trillium. And so at the moment, we're kind of in a holding pattern. Um, and we'll see where that goes. I'm also on the board of directors of a, a theater company in Aurelia. And we have um, had to revamp our entire season. And um, we're not sure where we're going, um, but we have some made, made some tentative decisions, uh, but nothing definite at the moment. And I'll leave, I'll leave it at that. Thank you, Michael. And is the, the Spark Symposium going ahead? The Spark Symposium has been postponed until October. Okay. It was to take place the first weekend in May. Uh, it's been postponed to October 22nd, I think is the start date. Okay. Still, it's still in the same location at okay. the gathering place on Six Nations. Right. All right. Well, thanks very much, Michael. Um, Shannon. Hi, everyone. I'm Shannon Brown. I'm from Kingston, Ontario, the Agnes Etherington Art Center at Queen's University. I know some of you um, just by face and others I've met before a few times. Um, so, um, yeah, we're uh, going to be bringing some of our content online. Again, we're like everyone struggling to figure out how to be viable and, uh, you know, make the most of the situation. But one of our most successful programs is in art and wellness. It's called the Art Hive. Um, anyone out there familiar with Art Hive, the Art Hive movement? Okay, so um, I just got off a, a four day Art Hive intensive. I think uh, I met you there <laughs> um, last year. So uh, we just had a four day Art Hive intensive conversation. Um, we did talk a lot about online Art Hives. Archives are really this collective movement. Um, there is a national archive network that I would recommend people take a look at. Um, but it, uh, there's a lot of support and a lot of conversation about bringing this kind of collective way of creating online together. Um, and uh, it's popping up all over. Uh, there's a woman from Ottawa named Heidi Smith who started an online archive um, last week. And so she's done 24 so far and they've all been incredibly successful. Um, so we'll be doing some of that, but I did want to echo what Jamie was saying about how right now the arts, it's, it's basically like the one main area where people are able to congregate and be online together and even at home and, and take care of themselves and be engaged. So I'm wondering <laughs> in this whole conversation, um, with the expertise that uh, uh, this organization has about mapping. Is there some way to do research right now about all of the different arts experiences that are happening online and, you know, trigger some sort of funding because there are so many artists and educators out there that are being expected to facilitate this for free and we're all super excited about it and a lot of people want to lead this right now. 
but again, artists will burn out and they will be taken advantage of in that way. So um, I think just as a, as a hive mind for us to really figure out how funding can go to the arts continue, continually at this time. Um, yeah, we are resilient, we are creative, and we are communal people. And so uh, coming together through the arts is gonna really help us. Thank you. Great, thank you, Shannon. <clears throat> uh, Sladyana. Sorry, there you go. Hi, sorry. Can you hear me? Yeah. <clears throat> Hi, my name is Lajana Lazewski, and I'm a community connection supervisor at the Multicultural Council in Windsor and Essex County. Um, in Windsor, I uh, believe we met before. Um, I'm just here. Um, we have uh, different groups uh, between all after school programs and youth groups and um, one of the main reasons I'm here because we run a women's arts and crafts uh, group for newcomer, newcomer women. And I'm here just to talk more about what it is that is happening and how to stay relevant and what can we do actually right now and for them and especially for um, uh, newcomers who have, um, in addition to many other struggles, um, they struggle with their language acquisition and trying to um, do something actually for them while they're in self-isolating and um, social um, uh, distracting, like distancing and everything else, right? So trying to get them something to do while they're at home. <clears throat> right, thank you. Yes, we met, we met that group. Yeah. 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 We've done stuff. <clears throat> yeah. Um, Sue. Yeah, hi, uh, I'm Sue McIntosh and I bring greetings to all of you from the furthest west that you will have here. I'm from Kenora, Ontario, so I feel quite isolated from a lot of you and you're doing great things by the sounds of it. Wow, <laughs> I'm just a teacher, I, um, a secondary music teacher. Um, my first teaching job was in 1981. Some of you weren't even born then. <laughs> uh, so. Uh, for me, I've seen such changes in the arts and how they're received in the schools and how they're treated, uh, particularly music, I guess. And uh, so I've seen the rise of music for sure and how arts are perceived in the school. And definitely I've been seeing the fall of that as well. So I love what I'm seeing online with um, so many, as, as you guys have mentioned already, so many artistic things happening, particularly in music. Uh, and now suddenly everyone realizes the importance of it. So I hope we can hang on to that once this is over and keep that mood going. So I really appreciate being in this group today. Thank you. I pr probably, if this hadn't happened, I wouldn't be here today. So I'm really grateful that it's happened this way. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you, Sue. Um, <clears throat> is there anyone else? I think I've got everyone who has their video on. Is there anyone else? to message me or turn on their video. Uh, oh, okay, great. Um, we'll go to Joan. Hi, everybody. Um, this is great that you're doing this. So I live in Ottawa, and um, like Michael, I have several different hats. One being that I'm the artistic director of the Capital Strings and Voices Collective. And we have two community orchestras that are intergenerational, um, and we do different projects every year there's usually a different arts project we've done um, we've had groups making quilts uh, touch quilts for people with dementia who suffer anxiety but the orchestra program is the ongoing program sorry I'm a little distracted because I'm trying to keep my dog from barking so I'm wrestling with her at the same time anyway so um, what's been really interesting is that this is actually fit right into our mandate which is to do music education with a paradigm that looks at how we are citizens in the community. And so we went online immediately and started pairing people up. We work with seniors, we, we meet in a senior's home, so that had to stop. But the kids are, are performing, they're going and saying, when is it warm enough we can play outside? So we'll play outside their balconies and they wanna have them open the windows and play to the to people. And they've been having discussions about, um, it, it gives us a place to discuss what's happening 
because that's part of how we do things. We have a Socratic environment, it's not a typical orchestra. So that's been very interesting. However, we were just about to launch a major dance project and that's not happening. And I, um, and I heard the funding was being taken away because I guess um, funding is being taken away for a lot of things that were supposed to start before August. So I'm not sure why it wasn't decided to postpone, but maybe, I don't know. But anyway, that, that was disconcerting to me. But on the other side, I also, um, I do quite a bit of one-on-one of -on -one teaching and I'm amazed how many students are doing better with online lessons. Ones who tend to get distracted are focused. I am even more focused. So there have been benefits, which is a little scary because of course we often resist, you know, we don't want our universities to think that they can put everything online and, and everything will be fine. So it's an interesting place to be. Anyway, thank you for inviting me. Yes, it sure is interesting right now. Um, is it Jan? Hi there. Can you see me? Yes. Okay, great. Hi, everybody. I'm from Kingston, Ontario. I'm an elementary school principal and trying to guide my staff and lead my staff through some unprecedented times. We're still waiting to hear from the Ford government what quote unquote phase two will look like. We're currently in phase one in Ontario and hopefully we'll hear news very soon on what the expectations are for teaching and learning from home for both teachers and for students, as well as EAs and early childhood educators and all the support staff that go into helping our students be the best that they can be every day. Um, I'm also um, one of the co-partner starters here in town for Systemic Kingston, which is a music group that functions in the North End, which is a disadvantaged part of our city. And so those kids normally have this program four days after school. Um, every week and since school's not in session they're not receiving that either so for me the discussion is not so much how to reach the kids at home who have supportive families and infrastructures to have computers and someone to help them get online and do all of those things but what about the kids who don't and uh, I think an equity lens is really important to all of these discussions can we help people who aren't as advantaged by having the latest computer or someone to sit with them or someone to get materials for them. Um, you know, a family that might have many, many heads in one house because they might be new immigrants to Canada. How can we help them get through these times and uh, access some things to really relieve some stress and give them meaningful things to do that are artistic and creative and make kids and families feel good. Great, thank you, Jen. Thanks. Um, Samantha. Hello. Can you guys hear me? Yes. Yeah, we can hear Great. you. Um, I'm a, awesome. Uh, my name is Samantha Brennan. I'm a uh, community arts animator at Dabaja Magic Storytellers on uh, Manitoulin Island, Wakwamakong Unceded Territory. Um, our my artistic director is here with us today too, as well, Bruce Nock. Um, hi, Bruce. Uh, so what we're doing as much content online as we can. That's really our only way of reaching everybody without actually being able to get together and with our infrastructure all being closed. Um, so we're, we're providing a variety of arts workshops and land-based workshops uh, via live stream. So what I was really interested in today was just kind of um, getting an idea, of, first of all, of how everyone's doing. And secondly, um, of what other kinds of um, video and internet based uh, digital media uh, everyone else is using to kind of get their messages across. Um, so yeah, I'm pretty excited to hear what you guys have been up to and how you're, how you're combating this today. Thanks. Great. Thank you. And Nia. Oh, we can't hear you. <clears throat> Hmm, I'm not showing that you're muted, so maybe something's wrong with your microphone. I'm not sure. No, can't hear you. Um, 
maybe I'm not sure. Maybe you could try calling in with the number on phone. That's sometimes, or maybe you're on. Oh, okay. We'll try. Hopefully, try again later. Um, and uh, Megan. Yeah. Hi. Um, I'm Megan. I'm the uh, programs manager with Ontario Culture Dates. Um, so because our network, um, or we work with organizations all throughout the province as part of the Culture Days weekend, we've been really trying to connect with all of our network to try and sort of see what their needs are, try and amplify a lot of the great online work that people are doing. But I think a lot of the questions people have been having about um, working strategically and efficiently and not sort of doubling up work or making busy work, but really sort of trying to figure out where that need is and, and what we can be doing to help is sort of what I'm hoping to glean from this. Great. Good. <clears throat> so other than Nia, who's having some uh, technical issues, I think we got everyone in there. Um, yes, L Larry, do you want to okay, go ahead if Nia can figure it thanks out? Every thanks, thanks everybody very much for sharing what, what, you've, been, what you've been saying so far. It's, um, and there's a very rich conversation going on in this in the chat uh, page as well. So um, we, in order to facilitate the um, discussion, we have we've got a number of questions, and you have touched on all of the questions we have. But we, what we'll do is we'll pose each question to kind of unpack uh, some of the issues that, that are going on. But before we go to another question, can I just um, hold on with this one? We're looking at the realities that you're dealing with, and I would like to ask how are you doing? Um, in other words, um, you're all being very, actually very professional. I'm hearing how you're concerned about making things work in your situation and the measures you will be looking at some of the measures you're taking. But how is, is this take, it must be taking a couple of you, Joe, Jackie mentioned it, I think Joan mentioned it, taking a toll on yourselves. And could you share some of that with us? Because I think that's important also to see what's happening with people personally. And again, if you want to comment, uh, just raise your hand if possible through the participants tab, um, or you can also wave, virtually raise your hand if possible. Yes, Michael. I'll get you un unmuted there. Okay, there you go. Uh, can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I'm a bit of a hermit. So, um, self and I live in the country. Um, so self isolation and self distancing is not particularly difficult for me. Um, I know that other people in my circle, family and friends are not quite so, um, comfortable with their own company as I am. So they are struggling. But um, the, I guess uh, what concerns me is the long term. We don't know how long this uh, uh, social distancing and self isolation will last. Uh, what will it do to our education system? What, what will it do to the arts? <clears throat> there are lots of questions that are unanswered at the moment. And I'm not sure that we can answer them at all. If anybody can, I'm not sure. But um, am I losing sleep over it? Mm, not really, not at the moment. Um, but it is a concern. The long term is much more of a concern than the short term for me. Right. Thank you, Michael. And someone made mention at uh, another one of these discussions that um, about audiences. Are they going to be shy to come back to these public spaces where there's everyone, is it going to, how long is that, uh, that process going to take before people feel comfortable even doing that again? So um, that's another long-term consideration as well. Anyone else have anything to add to that? Yes, Jackie. Uh, yeah, I find that there is a real expectation from people who are not fully informed um, at things that we should just be able to do. I've been asked a couple of times now to, oh, well, you know, like my, my choir is age, uh, we have four different levels. We start at five years old and we go to 17. And I've been asked a couple of times, you know, oh, would you do a virtual 
virtual choir piece for, for Facebook or whatever. And uh, when I say no, people are a little taken aback. And I said, well, you know, it's nice that those are out there. However, the amount of work, the hours, the programs, the editing skills, I said, it, it might look easy because you're seeing a finished product. I said, but I don't have those programs or those skills, um, nor am I going to spend the time doing that right now because overall it's actually not something that's beneficial to us as an organization. And I think one of the things that I've had to talk to my education team about as well is we do need to keep coming back to our mission and vision. And what is our mission and vision and how do we still promote that? Because I do not want to change that because this will pass and things will change. But we are a choral organization and we get our endorphin rush from being together in the same room. We will continue to sing together at some point, but anything we do in the meantime, I still really believe that it needs to serve our mission and vision and that we don't lose sight of that. Yes, absolutely, Jackie, thank you. And um, if anyone saw the TSO uh, one that they, they did of uh, them all coming together, I saw a blog. We actually posted the blog on our Facebook uh, of how they did that. And, and yeah, it took days and days and many, many man hours to get that happen and, and technical know-how as well. So, um, Sue. Yeah, I just wanted to add uh, about the virtual choir. Like, it's wonderful that the arts are so much in the forefront right now. But if I see one more virtual choir and somebody saying, oh, you should do that, too. Well, yeah, it's tons of work. And I think we're all here because of grassroots stuff, right? We want to get down to the, the, the nitty gritty and reach for me, reach those kids um, and one on one. I've just finished phoning all my students. So, yeah, it's more the grassroots stuff. Right. Absolutely. Thank you. Anyone else have anything to add on that topic? Yeah. All right, uh, Yansia. Uh, just that a couple of friends have mentioned that they've attended some online painting courses and that must be a heck of a lot of work to put it together to set up a studio um, in order to do, to do a demo. And this isn't a 10 minute thing. Um, a friend of mine attended like a two and a half hour painting, online painting course. Um, that's huge. So uh, just throwing that in for the burnout factor and, and all of that. And of course, there's, there's zero money in that, but well attended. Thanks. Yeah, that's another consideration, the money, absolutely. Um, Yes, and uh, Bruce has joined. Actually, uh, did you want to introduce yourself? Bruce Nakogizik, the artistic director for uh, the Bodge Music Theatre on Manitoulin Island. Um, just for our theatre group, we've, uh, we're uh, kind of like a big groups collective. So we always work with each other um, in creating a lot of our works and stuff like that. Um, so that's, um, and all of us are usually interactive physically with each other, creating works and things like that. Um, so just, I was saying a while ago there on uh, <clears throat> Facebook messaging, just going like, oh, I feel like one of those bored people who's been disconnected from his, from his collective, if, if, if you will. Um, just the idea of being able to create in that group mentality, that's kind of a, a lot of how we work. And so right now we're thinking of how can we create some online videos um, um, with characters, with little scenes and everything like that. Of course, a few of us have already done a few uh, online videos teaching uh, some perspectives on, on the culture and everything like that. Um, but this mentality of being in a group collective and trying to create something a la um, online right so and some of us are not online all the time and you wait for people to get online and you know they're just not getting online so it's 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 kind of a broken mentality at this moment trying to be able to uh work with your group and keep that group mentality when you're far far away um and of course our communities over here on the island are at least a half hour and an hour away just to uh communicate with each other but online is totally easy but i think it's something that where we're used to being with each other all the time 
face-to-face uh, -face working that for me, it just feels like it's a little harder to do when you're online uh, looking into a video camera and not, you know, because people have ideas when we're creating and stuff um, and people will speak over each other and things will um, <clears throat> happen all at the same time. And then, you know, with technology nowadays, the words get blurbed, images get uh, sloppy and stuff like that. So it's going to be a really detailed moment of, okay, who wants to say something next as we're doing here today, right? Um, so that's just kind of a change for us in this group mentality, um, working at the Bajmajig. And yeah, of course, we're right away um, thinking of some possibilities of videos that we can, we can do. Um, for this morning, I actually thought of doing a stop animation little video, but I have no props, no sets, no nothing. And I'm going to have to work with like sticks and stuff and just household items, right? I got no dolls, no nothing like that to do. Um, and we're theater based, right? So a lot of those things are literally on the stage for the stage with characters and stuff. So it's kind of how we're a little on Borg like over here, I guess. Thank you, Miigwech. Great, thank you, thank you. Uh, Nia, we'll try again, see if we can hear you this time. Can you hear me? Yes. Beautiful. Um, what I was gonna say is, you know, for us, I'm the executive, my name is Nia Reed. I'm the executive director of Hamilton Youth Poets. Um, we serve about 2,800 kids from middle schools all the way up to high schools, and we have multiple community programs. And so the pressure to move online, you know, staying in communication with all of our partners, um, shifting job roles to make sure that all of our staff stay employed over this time. Um, sorry. Uh, and even, even in the act of like moving things online, you know, we have a big concern about overpopulating uh, platforms that are, you know, created for youth. Um, which you know has become you know it's enormously generous but at the same time it becomes quickly irrelevant as more and more adults populate it um and i think the you know for us as well like we're still working towards we have a annual festival that happens each year in may so moving that online has been a, a new challenge as well and putting multiple technologies together. And just to answer the question, yeah, you know, I think social isolation and like the impacts on me, impacts on my staff, it's been a big shift. And I mean, I think that part of um, just in, in taking care of my staff, it's like making sure that we're doing two or three check-ins just to make sure people are doing well with their mental health. And, you know, mental health is like, uh, a big forefront for us, especially, you know, end of last week coming into this week, we're overwhelmed with the amount of, um, you know, just emails and messages that we're having from young people and their mental health, while at the same time dealing with our own staff and like how, how they're doing as well in all of that. And I would say it's, you know, it's incredibly challenging. I think even just as a leader in, in this work, um staying positive and keeping your your framework of moving forward and being conscious in in each step that you take you know going online and being uh very deliberate and conscious of what you're adding to it or, or what you're contributing so thank you great thank you nia uh, samantha hi folks um yeah, I'm kind of digging on what Bruce was saying too, like this uh, debauch hive mind that we have. It's really weird when uh, you're not spending a little bit of time every day with everybody. Um, so we're, I think we're all kind of struggling with that right now, but um, just kind of on a happy note, um, something that's, as community arts practitioners, something that's really important to us, two things that are really important to us are community and the arts. And these are two things that uh, people are realizing now in this crisis that are uh, coming to the forefront as things that are actually truly important in life when you strip away all of the unnecessities that we take part in every day. Two things that are really important for us are, for all humans, our community and the arts. So I think um, 
I think as opposed to seeing a decrease in our audiences after this is all over, I think we're going to see a huge participate in things like this. Um, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. Let's hope so. Yeah, thank you. <clears throat> uh, Lisa. Hi. Um, yeah, I just, I kind of want to riff on, on uh, what Samantha and Bruce both said. I think, um, you know, for community artists and, and artists in general, there is that, um, you know, you are part of the creative uh, impulse and dynamic is fueled by that um, intangible, you know, connection between people and, and, and the joy of that too in, in creating with others. And so I guess in this time of, of, you know, physical distancing, social distancing, I wonder if as we try to figure out a way to uh, move, move through this time and perhaps even beyond, you know, I guess, uh, you know, maybe we can, Mike, I guess I'm asking two questions. Maybe um, it's, I would love to hear about how in, in this, particular set of circumstances, how you would, how we would revisit the idea of community. What is, what does community mean, you know, in this environment right now that we're dealing with? And then what are the expectations that we can have of ourselves as, as arts practitioners, as, as, you know, community members um, that makes sense for the now, you know what I mean? Like, uh, what are some new expectations, like perhaps you know, it, it's not quite the same. And, and I've heard this and, and certainly experienced this myself directly, you know, as an artist. So, you know, it might be helpful to start to, in my mind, I, I always like to think about, okay, what can we, how do we define things? So how do we define community? And what are the expectations that are realistic for us now to give us at least a sense of, you know, it's not quite what it used to be, but at least we can do this. I'm, I'm kind of thinking about that. So just raising those questions, I'd be really curious to, to see what we would we could come up with. Right. Thank, Thank you. Lisa. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hopefully we'll be able to address that. Thanks. Uh, Cliff. Yeah, I just wanted to add in from a teaching perspective, um, you know, in the classroom, especially as arts uh, teachers and collaborators, we do so much to support kids with their own mental health and uh, integrating them socially and, and looking after them. And so I know I've been struggling with being out of the class setting and how do we still support those students? How do we still reach and connect with them? And we have to deal with layers of the union and the boards of education. And, and so that we're mindful that beyond just delivering curriculum, there's an important connection that artists and teachers uh, can make with students and their families. And, um, as I hear some of the discussion um, you, you know, and some of the <clears throat> discussion in the uh, chat, uh, there are students, perhaps a larger number than we imagine, that don't have internet access. So what kind of partnerships could be done with local television, with radio, other forms of communication, just so that we, we don't have a situation of that sort of haves and have nots, and, and we're really supporting that, that larger uh, network. Thank you, thank you, Cliff. Uh, yes, Michael, let me unmute you. <clears throat> and just to answer your question, Cliff, about television and radio, um, in many small communities ar across the province and in, across the country, there are community radio stations. And there is a, a very active one here in Halliburton called Canoe FM. And they are uh, entirely run by volunteers and they are always looking for programming. And I don't know if there's a, a community radio station in your area, your region, uh, but that would be an excellent resource. In fact, um, the local theater company here, um, whose show I was directing and got canceled, uh, we are figuring out how we can go into the local uh, radio station and record the um, script uh, for it to be broadcast. Uh, at a later date. And they're more than happy to try to accommodate us given the restrictions that are in place at the moment. Great, thank you. So this actually segues really nicely into our next question, uh, which is um, the measures that you are taking to sustain your work through digital. Larry, if you want to add to that. Yeah, I just wanted, I wanted to say um, in response to the, some of the conversation going on on the, on the right side of the screen, that 
this is actually the research that we're we thought we could do. <laughs> um, you will have access to not only this conversation, but actually we will post all of the conversations. So and, and our and uh, Misa's report will include all of the ideas. So we're going to go into this section now where we share what we are doing, both online and not, you know, through other means, maybe the good old fashioned telephone and so on. But um, but uh, the report will will include every uh, you know as many ideas as as, as we can can bring out. Um, and uh, yeah, I think that's that's probably what I wanted to say. So now we're yes, we're moving into this question of, okay, let's bring out some of the. Uh, I know you, many of you mentioned things already um, that you've been doing, but let's try to consolidate them and 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 get a kind of a brainstorm of what what you've been doing or what you know other people have been doing or we, what you think it might work to help in this situation. Yeah, and I saw someone on the chat had suggested that we at the network compile some resources. So we actually have been doing that uh, thus far. And uh, Caitlin has uh, been the one who's been kind of uh, putting them all together and adding to them every day. So Caitlin, if you want to talk a little bit about that. Sure, um, I'll share the link right now in the chat box. Um, so the page that I just shared with you has been kind of a living document over the past few days now of um, resources that I've been gathering and people have been telling me about. It includes financial assistance for artists um, in Canada and by province and by city um, and, and more so like in recent days I've been adding a lot uh, online learning um, kind of skill sharing uh like free mostly like try to be free mostly skill sharing resources um a lot of um my facebook groups where people are sharing performances and stuff like that so uh yeah if you have anything every, anything that's been said already in the chat box i've already added it to the page but if you have anything else that you'd like um add it in the chat or i'll put my email address there so please feel free to email me if you've got anything else you'd like to share Great, thank you. Uh, Jamie. Uh, yeah, um, like most groups, uh, we have started a resource page as well. But one of the, and I can share that, but I'm sure it's a lot of overlap. Uh, one of the things that we did do was we keep hearing that all of the creative sector individuals and groups um, and organizations should be keeping track of any lost revenue. So keeping track of postponed gigs, lost revenue, um, and all of those things. Uh, but unfortunately, a lot of the arts community doesn't have business as um, a really, really strong kind of feather in their hat. So we at Creative Industries created a template that everyone could download that just kind of helped everyone keep track of revenue losses and what to keep track of and where and how to do that and to have it in one place. So. Uh, I will share that too. But that was the one thing is we're supposed to try to keep track of all of these losses uh, moving forward. Um, but it's really overwhelming when you don't have the tools necessarily to do that. So we really wanted to have something there in place that our community could use. Um, so I think I shared that on the line on the, yes I did. So we made a Google Doc so you can just download it and use it on your own. Great, yeah. Yeah, thank you. That's very important. We've been hearing that a lot through the discussions that, uh, yeah, people definitely need to be tracking everything. Uh, and yeah, as you said, that's not always a strength. <clears throat> but um, that's good. We'll share that. We'll share that document uh, broadly. Anyone else uh, doing anything at this point uh, via digital or other means to kind of sustain them, to sustain your work? Yes, Shannon. Um, I just mentioned in here that I'm really involved in the ecstatic dance movement and I don't know if anybody out there is interested in moving your body and listening to some great music and connecting in socially online, but um, most big cities and cities like Kingston have a Facebook page for ecstatic dance and it's really a beautiful way for people to connect in. It's a, it's moving meditation. It's a sober space and you can participate with your camera off. But I'm just thinking about self-care. I'm always thinking about the arts and how we can um, think about wellness and, and self-care. But I would just recommend to you just to 
check it out. Um, but there's basically ecstatic dances happening 24 hours a day around the world right now. Um, so that's something to direct people to who maybe have never tried this type of experience before. Um, but those are my two go-tos for self-care is the Art Hive online art making movement and ecstatic dance. I'm wondering if there's anything that, that is um, online with theater groups who are doing like you know, creative theater expression that has that wellness component. Um, but I think it's probably out there. I just haven't seen it yet. Um, and also for music. So I'm interested in hearing. Great, thank you. Uh, Cliff. Yeah, just a, a simple um, item and it could work across different uh, art platforms. But one of my first contacts to students was, you know, after high and the low and how are you and your family's doing is just sharing a topical but funny YouTube music video, or you could do a monologue, a, a piece of visual arts, a, a dance sequence and uh, just letting them, you know, know that through the arts we are connected and it, it doesn't require a lot of time or research. Um, but I had the most feedback from students from that piece as opposed to here's a possible assignment or inquiries about, you know, do they have their instrument? And again, I think the power of the arts just to link us and communicate us can be uh, easy and quick and valuable nonetheless. Great, thank you, Cliff. And I did see, uh, I did see some comments kind of going by in the chat. It's going very quickly, that's great. Um, just about uh, uh, monetizing. I don't know if anyone has any, um, any thoughts on that? Uh, Samantha. So I'll just kind of give you guys a rundown of what we've done so far. Um, ideas for what we kind of want to do in the future and then touching on something that I think is really important about this. Uh, first of all, uh, what we've been what we've done so far is we've done um, we've done some land based live streams. Um, so that was uh, Ashley Manitowabi talking about starting seeds. Um, we also, I took everyone into the bush and showed them how to scrape deer hides to make rawhide to make things like drums and stuff like that. Um, we, we, uh, actually one of our guys is doing a live stream right now. His name's Brian Pelche. He's a classically trained guitar player. So he's playing some tunes on Facebook right now for people. Um, last night we had one of our employees post a very short, uh, he's playing flute out in his yard. It was nice and foggy out. He was kind of playing for the whole community. So he posted that as well. So there have been some things, um, some performance, little performance pieces and stuff that we've been putting online there as well. Um, ideas for the future. We, we want to do some more arts and crafts stuff. Uh, there's a lot of beaters in our group. Um, we can also create things like rattles, uh, like I said, drums. So those are options that are all on the table for us for the future. Um, we also had the idea of doing some clown. Uh, we could do it live or we could just record our videos, um, put them online for everyone to see. We've been throwing, uh, we have a little Facebook discussion group for everybody at Debodge, so we've been throwing ideas back and forth that way. Um, I'm sure we'll see more music online because Brian loves to play and um, his audience has obviously been kind of cut down recently. So we'll see more of that. Hopefully we'll see more of Sonny playing as well. And I just want to touch on um, one of the things that I'm thinking about when I'm brainstorming for these live stream ideas is that I think something that's really important other than to just entertain people, which is also super important at this time, is to model for them, to show them what they can be doing during this time. Because a lot of people are like, going a little bit nuts, getting a little stir crazy, a little bored. And a lot of these things can be done with stuff you have laying around the house or with no materials at all. So um, just being an example for people and showing them what, what they could be spending their time doing, how they could be spending their time creatively. And you know, although sometimes it can be just fun, it, that is productive in itself. So showing people that it's important to, um, to focus on self-care as well, even, even when it does end up being productive. <laughs> Great. Thank you, Samantha. Um, <clears throat> and uh, yeah, so anybody have any thoughts on, I mean, there's no, there's a lot of great stuff happening online on social media and whatnot, um, but about um, potentially monetizing those efforts or arts and learning online, have, uh, have you been doing um, online lessons, uh, that type of thing. Some we heard in, uh, I think it was Saskatchewan, there was one person who was busier than ever 
couldn't take on any more students because now he's got all this time to be um, everybody has time in there everybody's taking lessons right now online so I don't know if that is anybody else's experience um, yeah Jackie uh, yeah I teach uh, on I've been teaching online voice lessons and conducting lessons and I was actually pleasantly surprised that you can hear uh, some of the fine points of tone quality uh, and tell what's going on in a student's body and see it in the conducting. So I was really pleased with the quality. Uh, I did, I've been doing it through Zoom, uh, but it's also with my older students because they do need to have confidence and they need to be able to take on the initiative. Uh, I purposefully taught a student a new piece because without an accompaniment and she can't sing with me. Uh, so it would be, I would sing, she would sing back, I would sing the next two bars, she'd sing back, we do the four bars. Um, so it does rely on a little bit more confidence than some of the younger students have. Um, the conducting lessons also, that's, that's been going very well. Um, I think overall, now, and that also is dependent on families that are still working and getting paid. Because some of my students, their situation is not that they can pay for lessons right now, uh, which is great, you know, it's just like, okay, don't even worry about it when we move forward, we'll figure it out. Uh, I don't want to take it away from them. But at the same time, like so many of us, if we're not doing our work, we're not getting paid. Uh, so that's a, a certainly a challenge. Um, but in terms of the, the other discussion, uh, I think it's really significant, the importance of just seeing each other. I was very surprised. I was in a Zoom meeting with a bunch of choral conductors from across the country. And I couldn't believe the sense of relief I felt just seeing all my colleagues. And I thought, oh, you know what? I should try to figure out something to do with my choristers because they're gonna to wanna to just see each other. Um, so, and then some of the comments from parents, and right now I do have you know, a, a girl that's in the hospital. She wasn't able to come to our regular rehearsal, but she could attend by Zoom. And the comments coming in from parents uh, how positive it was just for the kids to see each other and see me because, you know, I mean, we all love each other and we miss each other. Um, but uh, I have a board meeting on Wednesday night and we will be discussing how we're going to move forward financially. You know, do we offer parents any kind of reimbursement? Because this is definitely, we are definitely not having rehearsals because you can't sing together. Uh, we haven't got our workshops or performances. Those are all laid aside for now. Um, but people are still benefiting, but it's certainly not what they signed up for. Uh, and for some people, it's fine. They're like, nope, this is great. It's, you know, I'm getting paid. But for other families, you know, they probably do need that money. So it'll be a very interesting discussion. I have a very supportive board. They're very supportive of the music team. Uh, I know we're looking at still paying everybody what was in the budget until the end of June, with the exception of concerts and workshops, but regular rehearsal time. Uh, and we have about four different budget scenarios that we're going to be discussing on Wednesday. Um, but it, it's, it's one of those ugly realities uh, that those of us in the arts, as generous as we are, we also have to pay our bills. Very true. Yeah, thank you, Jackie. Anybody else have any, uh, anything to add to that? <clears throat> Certainly know there have been a lot of layoffs across the country when it comes to um, arts organizations and whatnot. Um, and people have certainly seen um, people asking for, you know, instead of a a uh, refund, can you get a credit or will you donate that, donate your ticket, the cost of your ticket to the organization, that type of thing, these kind of uh, measures going into effect. Anybody else have anything to add as far as uh, either the work they're doing or paying employees, etc.? <clears throat> All right. Larry, I don't know if you want to move on to the next question then. Excuse me. Yeah, sure. Thanks very much. Um, so again, you've mentioned this, a number of people have veered in this direction, but I, I would like to dig it out a bit more. And that is um, because you've been thinking about uh, ways that you can apply the arts to help out in the current situation. I know that we're, I mean, we're using just a conversation here, but I have to tell you that I feel so much better that each day I can take part in the, this. I feel like that I'm doing something. 
I, like I'm not just waiting for it to be over, but I, I feel, as, you know, satisfied, um, feel that I'm doing something worthwhile. And, um, and, and I feel that I'm doing it for our, for our sector in, in this difficult time. And a number of you have mentioned things that you're doing or concerns that you have for your clients and your students and so on. So could we unpack some of that? Uh, things that you're doing that would be specifically applied or that you would like to do that would be specifically applied to helping folks out in this very weird situation. Yes, Bruce. Um, I guess for us, um, <clears throat> sorry, pardon me. Uh, we had a project going that was going to bring some artists from Spain, but then the Can Canada Council has uh, blocked all travel from uh, in, uh, national and international travel. Um, so a lot of our shows that we create are from scratch. And so one of those things is uh, a lot of research and a lot of reading on history and stuff. Um, and since that uh, um, project has been uh, postponed at this time, uh, we also have been requested from another uh, individual about creating a show on the Robinson-Huron Treaty. So for us at the Bajmajig also, we're, we're not contracted artists, we're full-time employees kind of. Um, so we're in the situation at the moment of uh, there's the new access to the CERB and also um, so what what is our situation in here so do i what is my justification to stay on board as an employee and justify being able to work from home um knowing that we're a collective and stuff but in the idea of it is like okay i can do a lot of research from home i can do a lot of reading i can do a lot of note gathering so that when we do come back um, there's a lot of information pertinent to creating a performance of some sort to uh, the Robinson-Huron Treaty. Um, so e even though we're kind of strapped from not being at work, there's also the whole other work, which is like research, a lot of reading, a lot of self-learning uh, towards a project that one is doing. Um, and so coming to like there's a lot about the Robinson here on tree and so trying to share that with our group also um, asking them to read all the material that I've been reading so that again we come to a, a lot of ideas um, about what we can create on that show and um, so just from one change we now get to move into another area of work which we thought at before was not able to do because we had this longer project happening with us um, and this new project was supposed to be done next year uh, November October so we're thinking we can hopefully get back soon and be able to start creating this new show since the our first idea has been uh, postponed due to the uh, corona uh, COVID virus. Um, so, um, so just in that manner of, of just in the idea of creating, what do we, what is there to look up? Uh, what is there to find? What is, uh, as we always say, at, or I always say at the work too, is what is our message to the world when you're going to create something, right? So for me too, like thinking about that earlier, like last week, uh, what do I want to create on the, on the internet? Um, is it something that's just nonsense? Because um, you could do anything on the YouTube, you could do anything on Facebook, right? But but is it meaningful? Is it entertaining? Is it does it say something about a situation or our situation at this moment? Um, of course, I could sing some songs and everything like that, but I, 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 I that's a little too easy for me, if you will. But but the idea of sending that message out there in the world again, uh, that's kind of where I always take my base out. And so that's, for me, that's where the real work comes into creating something is what is that message to the world? So from one shift being uh, delayed, 
to a new shift of looking up new material, looking up a lot of reading and, and trying to get that all into your head so that you can start moving towards that, uh, creating a performance and what is the message to the world in creating your performance. So that's just a little shift that uh, happened for me at the Bajmajid. Great, thank you, thank you. Mm. Uh, Julie. Hi everyone. Um, I, I guess like advocacy is very important for our organization. Um, and you know, I've heard criticism before by um, politicians that the arts aren't very organized. Um, and I think that this, um, this situation um, um, is sort of forcing us to get together. So meeting, you know, meeting people um, from all over Ontario. Um, I participated in Ontarians for the Arts where I got to speak to politicians and that was a really good training. Um, what I learned about, I learned some really good skills and I, it was a great way to connect with uh, leaders in my area. And also, you know, to talk about the importance of the arts. Um, we are, you know, I was hesitant, you know, in, you know, to do sort of like online, um, Sort of chats and stuff but this is sort of forcing us to gain those skills um and so um we you know when like we have a grant application um uh, project from the ontario arts council so i think that like at first i was hesitant with like bringing in the oac because um you know we're located in windsor and uh you know with the funding cuts it's hard to get people to to travel to our area to help us um facilitate workshops or to lead info sharing. So I think that, um, I think this experience will sort of, uh, you know, help us develop those skills to be able to connect with those organizations without having to pay for them to come and, uh, you know, pay for their uh, lodging and uh, travel expenses. Right, yeah, thank you. And we were actually supposed to be there. In yeah. <laughs> but uh, we had to cancel our series of events as well. Um, <clears throat> Sue. Yeah, I, I kind of forget what the question was now, but I know I put my hand up. So uh, <laughs> I think I want to comment on two things. First of all, to pick up on what Bruce was saying, I find there's so much out there right now for musicians to learn from online on Facebook. Wow, some of the, the big time choral musicians are stepping forward and offering their advice. It's fabulous. And so I'm definitely taking those things in. So this is a good time for me to learn. And then you know, will help me hopefully pass that on to my students. So the second thing, how am I going to keep things going? Uh, what am I going to offer? I think was the question, but um, I was thinking of just for my, for my church family, normally I'd be at church on Sunday playing and singing music. So I haven't done this yet, but I'm going to uh, make some recordings of just you know, certain songs that I know that they would appreciate and just put that on our uh, church uh, website or church Facebook. It could be easy to do that. So that's something that I can do. And yeah, anything, I forget who said it before um, about doing some goofy things, putting out some funny music videos for other students. Yeah, I have a character that I play at my school uh, on when I read the announcements. And so I'd like to do something goofy for the kids because if you mix music and the arts with being with some good laughing and stuff uh, that can do go a long way to lightening spirits. So learning from what I'm seeing online and then trying to get it out there uh, to, to my students, I hope. Great. Thank you, Sue. Um, <clears throat> Yeah, and as far as uh, as far as what the network is doing, obviously we're doing these series of roundtable discussions um, and trying to gather resources and share information to the sector on um, uh, <clears throat> on our newsletters, also on our social media pages, etc. We are uh, many of you know about our map, Canada's map of arts and learning, where um, we have almost 9,000 artist educators on the map and arts organizations as well. And so we're continuing to develop that as, and um, um, looking to people to tell us if they teach online. So trying to also potentially launch a, a, um, a directory of people who teach online who would be available, especially in this time when people are home looking for these kind of things. But um, looking 
for um, you know what else we can do for you for the sector during this time. Uh, Larry, I don't know if you wanted to jump in there at all. Or thanks. Yes, that's just it. That's uh, what can we do? And uh, I mean, we I, I'm really pleased we were able to put this together, and we've had a wonderful response. And thank you all very much. It's it, because um, it really helps us to. We're really continuing our work with this digital project, but we're doing it online. And interestingly enough, um, we've reached more people this way. I mean, you know, don't tell the Canada Council this, but, <laughs> but uh, we've reached a lot of people this way rather than going and seeing them in person. So we want to see them in person. We want to see you all in person, but, but wow, this is some, um, I think also the time, I mean, this weird time we're going through is kind of motivating for us to want to do this sort of conversation, take this kind of conversation. It's a time of reflection for many of us. Uh, if you can, I know some of you are so busy that reflection may be coming later, but it's just a, a time to, and you were talking a lot about what the main values are, like what, what are, what are we trying to do in each of our, your situations? But what, what are our goals and uh, what's really fundamental? What is it that, and, and sometimes we find that what's really fundamental is we actually have to be together with people. But um, thank you for that. Uh, so yes, yeah, so just open the, uh, open the floor to, uh, you know, if, if we have our, our, our wonderful team that is currently being paid for by the Canada Council uh, to work in digital areas. But what, what do you think that, uh, an organization like ours might do further that would, would be helpful to the sector. And I think that Larry did mention this as well earlier, but we are uh, with this data, as he's mentioned, he says doing the report and also we will be writing letters um, and, and whatnot. I know that was going through the chat earlier, but uh, reaching out to uh, ministers federally and provincially. Um, yes, Jackie. Yeah, I actually am finding this time, this weird time, a time when I am able to connect with people from all over the country. Uh, because as busy as I am with trying to cope with it all, I am finding time like this to have these kinds of meetings with people I would never have gotten to meet if it was a personal meeting. Uh, I certainly love to meet personally with my colleagues in my area. But learning, and even this conversation today is so interesting and so inspiring to hear what different people from across the country are doing in different groups. And uh, I mean, I, I don't know anyone, I know Joan, but I don't know anyone else. But I feel like such a kinship with everyone because we have the same goals from all over the place. And I've written a bunch of your names down. It's like, oh, I gotta keep this person in mind and that person in mind. So of course, you know, personal connection, absolutely in the same room. But these kinds of forums where we can connect from across the country, and the Coral Forum I was in a couple of, or I guess about a week and a half ago, feels like a longer time, uh, there, it was international. So there were people from Singapore, from Australia, uh, all in the same boat. And, uh, you know, even though it's, a, as I say, before a stormy sea, there's a real comfort in being in that boat uh, with people from all over the world with the same positive ideas and proaction and, and support of each other. So these kinds of things, um, are really, really valuable, and I'm really glad to have the time to enjoy them right now. Wonderful. Thank you, Jackie. Uh, Cliff? Um, just when you mentioned, you know, reaching out to different organizations, ministries, the Minister of Education especially, um, they've spoken a lot about uh, focusing on STEM and, you know, maybe rewording the STEAM, right, the arts component, and, and not only is it valuable, to the students we serve, but again, linking together that broader arts community. And I, I think uh, anything you can do to advocate um, that top down, there's an awareness of that really integral importance of all the arts. Yes, absolutely, absolutely, thank you. Any other thoughts? <clears throat> yes, Gregoire. Hi, and thanks again for this discussion. Um, CHRC doesn't normally interact much with the uh, education ministers or uh, in, in those fields. We have a closer working relationship with Heritage, the Canada Council for the Arts, and uh, ESBC. Uh, I put out a bulletin 
to our, our membership and on our website saying, you know, there's all this government support coming in. And there is always the question of how much do we give for free? And arts are often solicited to, you know, give for free. I, I sent out a message saying, you know, the government is willing to put some money on the table here for people not to starve. If you feel bad about it, you should just give back if you want to, uh, in the form of any online content that you can. This may not be a popular opinion, but I think there are a lot of people that may be going stir crazy soon. So if ever in your discussions with uh, education ministers or, or those authorities, you wanted to use CHRC as a conduit towards the, uh, the arts sector, I'd be happy to post some of those messages on our uh, COVID page or through the membership list. So at the same time as we want information, we are ready to, to disseminate it. And if there are asks or if they have needs, because I think the, um, the arts and culture component will be a little harder to handle at home by parents than let's say maybe math or English or French. Right. So um, that is that is there and available for them. And if ever you want to connect them with us, we'd be happy to, to help out in any way. That is wonderful. Thank you. We definitely will. <clears throat> That's very helpful. Um, anyone else at this point? Any last comments before we sign off? All right, Larry. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. This has been inspiring and stimulating and, and not at all disheartening, actually, because people are really thinking in very creative ways about what, that, what we could possibly do to keep, to keep our work going and to help folks uh, with what we're doing. So um, yeah, just we'll, be, we'll continue to be in touch with you. And I don't know if we're going to be able to pull together another series of these or if there's something else that we should do instead or in addition. But uh, we're, we're going to continue uh, with these towards the east of the country now. We've done the west and central, well, part of central Canada. So um, anyway, thank you and very best of luck to everybody. And uh, great to hear from you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Stay well. Bye-bye. Big witch.